in order to study and contain the nightmarish phenomena of the world. The Authority made heavy use of involuntary subjects during the first century, after its separation from the Papacy. But as humanity advanced, new and sophisticated methods of containment and study became accessible through scientific engineering. Old barbaric use of CSD slowly diminished, but old habits die hard, and many of the unethical traditions of the early Authority still linger. CND Resources is the contemporary Authority solution to this, created in order to organize and regulate CSD use to fit modern ethical standards. CND Department Head Overview Combined and Disposable Resources is responsible for ethical evaluation, housing, acquisition, and logistical coordination of the Authority's Involuntary Disposable Personnel, or CSDs. Each sub-department builds its own niche, and are at constant odds with pushing against the Presidium's boot just to get the job done. Most Authority facilities operate with their own unique systems and regulations which makes CND's work considerably more complicated and varied. Ethical evaluation is performed by the CND Disposition, who work tirelessly to minimize inhumane treatment of CSDs. For all of its operations, the Presidium Office of Ethics and Review always had the watchful eye, silently waiting for the Disposition to slip up and violate the ethical codes, granting OEAR leeway to reacquire the department from CND. The Directorate knows that the Office of Ethics and Review's careful watch over the disposition leads its personnel to work more effectively than the OEAR could ever do itself. CND Upkeep's only written responsibility is to combine and contain CSDs which aren't in use, but its efforts dig far deeper. A majority of Authority personnel are good-willed, and use of involuntary subjects, effectively slaves, is unconscionable for most. The Authority is supposed to be a force for good in the world, but if its actions are far more negative, then it isn't worth it. For this reason, the most important factor for maintaining personnel morale is to maintain CSD morale. Most will see involuntary subjects as inherently immoral, but if the Authority does all it can to minimize the cruelty of such subjugation, then the benefits to humanity that come through the Authority's work may outweigh this evil. CND Upkeep is always working against the Office of Financial Affairs to provide livable spaces for its CSDs. CND Acquisitions is responsible for all external sourcing of CSDs, including subjects on death row and within sanatoriums and or asylums. This requires careful negotiation with many state governments, and the Office of Diplomatic Relations is always trying to influence or involve itself in them. In addition, the Office of Human Resources will often reject acquired CSDs if they do not meet the department's meticulous standards. Last but not least is CND Logistics, tasked with the safe and effective transport of CSDs between Authority facilities. Different regulations of such facilities make logistics between locations substantially more obtuse than the other sub-departments have to deal with, as CND Logistics does not have the luxury of subdividing its operations to individual sites. CND Disposition The disposition handles the approval and safety assurance of all CSD uses within the Authority. The disposition is managed by two officers for each regional command, carefully selected from the Office of Ethics and Review ranks. Known as the Disposal, these officers are, in theory, the sole deciders and ethics arbiters of CSD use for any purpose within their jurisdictions. However, several decades of added red tape have allowed certain expedient but limited avenues to acquire CSD subjects without clearance from CND resources. If you can't get disposal to sign off on your requested CSDs, you'll be forced to cancel the task, alter the task to be less dangerous and hope they'll sign on that, or find an alternative that doesn't require CSDs. Personnel from the more occult branches of research often run their rituals on themselves because they can't get disposal to grant CSDs for their esoteric, bizarre experiments. Requests for CSD subjects are rated on a three-point scale, according to the estimated risk involved. Tasks without risk of significant injury or psychological strain are classified as L1 tasks. Tasks with unavoidable 
but improbable risk of serious injury or death, or are otherwise horrific slash demoralizing in nature, are classified as L2 tasks and make up the bulk of all CSD assignments, approximately 80%. Tasks with a great chance of dismemberment, psychological damage, or death are classified as L3 tasks. The CSDs themselves are ranked with a corresponding three-point scale, based on the quantity and severity of cruel and despicable actions the subjects have committed prior to acquisition. Those who live mostly mundane lives without serious ethical transgressions are designated as L1 CSDs. Those with psychopathic tendencies and actions against others are designated as L2 CSDs, and those who have committed extreme actions to end or permanently scar another person's life, rape, murder, etc., are designated L3 CSDs. It is not uncommon for the L3 CSD pool to become exhausted when additional CSDs are needed for gruesome tasks. In these cases, L2 CSDs are selected at random to perform necessary L3 tasks. Once the disposal approves a CSD request, it's up to the main body, known as the disposers, to dispose and persuade those requesting CSDs to seek alternatives to human testing, decrease the number of CSDs being requested to the bare necessary count, and to introduce greater safety measures within testing. If the disposition does its job well enough, it won't be hard for CND acquisitions to keep up with demand. CND Upkeep CND Upkeep handles the maintenance of CSD living space, morale, and similar. Upkeep usually allows CSDs who are mentally sound to eat in the same cafeteria as maintenance union personnel, and to participate in other various recreational activities, in order to maintain morale both CSDs and authority staff. Primarily L1 CSDs and L2 CSDs on a strict case-by-case -case basis. However, despite the homely exterior, CND upkeep is also in charge of CSD instruction, integration, and discipline, often grueling by necessity. CSDs who remain aggressive and uncooperative despite upkeep's efforts will be marked as aggressive in the Authority Information Database and separate from primary CSD confinement. Such CSDs are only used for tasks which cannot be compromised by an unwilling subject, and these tasks tend to be some of the worst. All efforts are made to prevent revolts and rioting, but ASF personnel are always prepared to handle a situation. Living conditions are generally a major improvement over the criminal prisons most CSDs come from, significantly reducing the chance of any riot to break out. Additionally. ASF personnel are primarily stationed to secure the facility as a whole, rather than the CSDs alone, lessening any tension resulting of the power dynamic. Any ASF personnel who act maliciously toward CSDs are usually relocated to other positions within the facility. Most major Authority facilities have a wing for permanent CSD storage. Smaller facilities have temporary holding cells with low capacity and must request CSDs be transported to and from sites with permanent holdings. CSDs are kept separate by level, as determined by the disposition. Exact specifications for confinement cells vary by site, but the mandated minimum by the OEAR is 3.5 m2 for permanent holding and 3.0 m2 for temporary holding. Any cell in which a CSD is confined overnight must possess a suitable mattress-slash-bed, toilet, and sink. Additionally, most facilities will allow and provide for any CSDs that have a writing journal and or a deck of playing cards. Personalized amenities are often granted for extended compliance with personnel, under strict regulation by the Office of Financial Affairs. It is common for personnel of the maintenance union to purchase items such as music players and board games for CSDs they become familiar with when it is not within Upkeep's budget to do so. It is standard practice for CSD attire to be color-coded, with yellow for L1 CSDs, orange for L2 CSDs, and red for L3 CSDs. Not all sites follow this code, but most do, at least in the United States and Europe. CSDs are usually allowed to choose from a small selection of clothing styles provided. 
Every CSD is identified using a unique six-digit numerical code. CSD slash XXXXXX, listed within the Authority database. However, individual sites and regions may also use their own shorter systems. These numbers are rarely used in communication. Personnel generally call CSDs by their given names or designated code names. Although rare, it is possible for CSDs to decrease their level through parole, based on amiable behavior, or increase for particularly egregious behavior. Occasional interviews are held with CSDs in order to build ongoing profiles for the kinds of locations and tasks individual subjects are best suited for. It is often necessary for the Authority's extraterrestrial facilities to maintain on-site reserves of CSDs. These facilities have significantly reduced ability to provide amenities and such. For this reason, primarily CSDs with a particular affinity for space environments are transported to these facilities, as CSD morale would be high, no matter how awkward and unideal the living conditions may be. Consequently, most CSDs in operation by the AEDF are eager to cooperate and be deployed. C and D Acquisitions C and D Acquisitions handles the acquisitions of new CSDs into the Authority, and must be able to generate a supply great enough to keep up with CSD users across the Authority. Usual sources include subjects negotiated out of death row or asylum-slash-sanitariums, as well as malicious agents captured by the Protection Division. Acquisitions tends to be the connected component between each of the CND subdepartments, even more so than logistics. Acquisitions works to collect as much data and background information on subjects as possible, critical for the disposition to be able to cast judgment, and helpful for upkeep to determine the best location for each CSD to be held, during and after the integration process. Furthermore, Acquisitions' transport of CSDs makes up a large majority of logistics work. There are certain rare times of crisis in which the Authority is in desperate need of CSDs much more than acquisitions can provide normally. The Directorate may call for CND acquisitions to take extreme measures. Subjects may be taken from refugee camps, and the OFA may bribe individual prisons to transfer petty criminals who wouldn't normally be taken. These emergency CSDs are kept separate from the main pool, and are returned to their original locations as soon as they are no longer needed. CND Logistics C&D Logistics handles most transportation of CSDs between sites and within major area locations. This subdepartment prides itself on its efficiency, making use of all-terrain transportation jeeps and utility helicopters fitted for landing in adverse weather conditions, on uneven ground, and over water. Only twice in the subdepartment's existence has an emergency CSD request been critically delayed. In order to maintain a cohesive logistical system on a global scale, despite the numerous restrictions and special cases, the Logistics Networking Team LNT, keeps constant track of every CSD's location and specifications, and uses complex algorithms to determine the quickest, most efficient connections and routes for each region, each facility, and each CSD transport. Notably. Many facilities are picky about which types of transport vehicles that can be stored within or brought to their sites. This often requires multiple stops at different locations to be made each trip. Extraterrestrial and submarine transport, for example. Because of this complexity, sacrifices have to be made in order to ensure CSDs can be delivered without delay on urgent calls. However, this focus on efficiency is often at the cost of CSD morale and health stirring discontent with CND upkeep and the Office of Ethics and Review. Logistics helicopters are fitted to carry around six CSDs at a time, held in a closed chamber and strapped down to a seat, up to eight if they're crammed in. Jeeps are generally able to carry six CSDs at a time, and larger transport trucks for long-haul transit can fit up to thirty. The Authority also possesses a small number of refitted passenger aircraft which can each hold up to 30 CSDs, but only a small percentage of facilities possess a suitable landing location nearby. In the past, the Authority made heavy use of railcars for transport, 
but these fell out of use with the introduction of aircraft transit. In order to conceal authority operations, CSD transport vehicles are designed to appear similar to the prisoner transport vehicles used by local police. You have acquired much of my department's work due to the recent budget cuts, but don't start thinking you're the best for the job. There isn't a department in the Authority that doesn't believe you're a bunch of ideologues. We'd love for you to prove us wrong, but we will be watching you carefully. We'll get our work back if you screw things up. Head of ECF Presidium Human Resources